You've been living in a dream world. We live in an artificially generated reality, built to keep us under control, in order to change a human being into this. In 1999, the Wachowskis introduced us all to The Matrix, a computer-generated world in which the future post-war human population are cocooned, oblivious to the reality that they are slaves to machines. The film was influenced by philosophers both ancient and modern, from Plato's cave to Jean Baudrillard's simulacra and simulation. But whilst The Matrix was a science fiction nightmare, those philosophers talked about the real world, the one you and I live in. We all live in a dream world created and maintained by the media, corporations, governments, advertisers, educators, and in the case of autistic people, the scientists, academics and psychologists who spent the last 80 years telling us our minds don't function properly. Thanks to them, a great many autistic people have been conned into thinking that they are deficient in ways they simply are not. They've been given an unrealistic vision of neurotypical life which has made them feel like failures or incomplete people when in fact they're just people. We have been duped by the system and have suffered unnecessary pain because of it. In the Matrix the machines harvested the electricity generated by human bodies to fuel their society. In the real world, we're plugged into an illusion based on consumption, aspiration and consensus to gather different fuel. Our labour and our compliance. Like the Matrix, the majority have been fooled into believing it's by choice. If you don't toe the party line, you're excluded from the benefits of this system. Which is why so many autistic people find it difficult to get through education, to connect to others or find suitable employment. More than once, I've encountered autists who think that their quality of life would be far superior if they were neurotypical. There is truth in that, but the reasons are not what they think them to be. Their belief is founded on inaccurate ideas of neurotypical life and abilities that have surrounded them since they were first identified as different. Not being autistic may reduce some of the barriers we face. But those barriers are for the most part not caused by being autistic. They're caused by the common fear of the unknown. That fear is often twisted into hostility towards others because of their colour, nationality, faith, sexuality, gender identity and even where they scribble their X on voting day. Autistic people experience it because our minds are unpredictable which makes those who don't know us better feel threatened. The difficulties we face are not because we are different, but because society doesn't handle difference well. Social structures that most of the world takes for granted are built on the principle of consensus and of mass compliance. They cater to the majority of people, but penalise the outliers. Someone who doesn't or can't comply will inevitably be cast out. Everything in the world today is transactional. There is no one-way traffic. Everything is based on exchange, however unfair those exchanges may be. Nothing is without cost, whether it be paid in money, labour, favours, affection, compliments or whatever currency suits the purpose. Even truth is a commodity traded and guarded by those who hold it. Those who have large reserves of any kind of currency hold power over others. Autists upset the balance of that economy, because our minds are unusually biased towards truth, candour and altruism. When we tell a truth, we take away power from those who kept it secret. When we pay someone a compliment without demanding one in return, we place them in debt to us. When we help someone without expecting anything in return, we confuse people because they've been conditioned to believe they must owe us something. Not being able to pay that perceived debt makes people uncomfortable and that leads to mistrust and dislike. So much of natural autistic behaviour disrupts the workings of the many transactional social economies that make our world tick in its current form. 
The fact that we seem so alien to the majority who've chosen to accept this transactional way of living life, and the corresponding alienation so many of us feel, has made too many people, both autistic and non-autistic alike, receptive to the idea that we're not just different, we are deficient. Some of the ideas that I found autistic people believing about themselves are patently untrue, and often built on huge misconceptions about society or humanity as a whole. The same illusion of prosperity, hope and happiness built by media and governments and propagated by its willing participants has infected the minds of so many of us to make us believe that we are inferior people. It drives us to depression. It makes us fight against our own. It creates fantasies of neurotypical life that just aren't true and in some cases it drives us to the brink with tragic consequences. More than once I've come across individuals and small groups of autists who've been told they lack empathy and built themselves a fantasy in which neurotypical people have some kind of emotional telepathy, a magic mind power they have to struggle without. There's autistic people who think that neurotypical people are all happier than them, have dozens of reliable friends and perfect romantic relationships, and their own lack of these drives their anxiety and depression. Some think that if they could just flick a switch that changed their designation from autistic to neurotypical, they'd lead a completely different life, without recognising that if they weren't autistic, they wouldn't be the same person. It would change so much of their personalities, they would cease to exist. Same name, same face, but a different driver behind the wheel. It's not just the images we see on TV and online of beautiful people and self-made millionaires that contribute to such unrealistic perceptions of non-autistic life. The people we grew up with, our work colleagues and our families weave similar illusions on their social media and in the stories they choose to tell us. They all pretend they have clean houses, never wear the same shirt twice, exercise regularly and always pay their bills on time. They want us to believe that they're popular, respected by their colleagues, loved by their partners and their families, and above all, that they're happy. They wear a facade of competence, confidence, contentment and control. They're compelled by the standards of society to propel the grander illusion of a happy, functional society into the mundanity of their own lives. And when autistic people believe it, we do ourselves a disservice. I'm autistic, and I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm top dog in my social group. I don't have to struggle to retain my position, keeping secrets to hold off challenges and strategically rationing favours to work my way up the ladder. I can spot details and solve problems that my neurotypical friends struggle with, and I don't ever have to worry about being bored, because I always have a special interest to occupy my mind. I know that I can never get caught out in a lie, because I don't tell lies. But more than anything else, I know that if I make a friend, they like me for who I am, not a persona I maintain to keep up appearances. I'm not projecting the image society demands of me, I'm just my raw, honest, autistic self, so I can't disappoint them by letting my guard down. Being autistic in the modern world is hard. We have to deal with prejudices and misconceptions unique to us. Society puts us at a disadvantage because we can't be corralled into set, acceptable ways of thinking and behaviour. We're too full of surprises. If we could be easily predicted or controlled, then we wouldn't be seen as deficient or our behaviour questioned. We'd be model citizens. Neurotypical life may not present the same barriers as autistic life, but it has barriers of its own. Non-autists have concerns and neuroses that most autistic people aren't even bothered by. And the biggest of those is maintaining the image of being happy and just the right amount of dissatisfied with life that you're seen to be aspirational, but not so ambitious that those you hope to impress feel threatened. Most neurotypical people aren't ready to be unplugged. But if you're autistic, 
you've never been fully plugged in. If you think being neurotypical is something to aspire to or to envy, you've been conned. Thank you for watching. There's a new Autistomatic video every week on a Wednesday. But if you want to see more and more comprehensive videos on the channel, then you can join us as a patron on Patreon. Or support us by treating yourself to some of our merch. You'll also help the channel by subscribing here or watching another video here.